Good morning, beautiful people, and welcome back to You Life with Dr. Amanda. Today, I am taking you along for a day in the life. For those of you who don't know, I am a doctor, Dr. Amanda. I work in the UK as a GP, or for some of you might be a family medicine doctor. Today, I have I'm at work, I've got a jam-packed day actually. I've got two clinics, morning, afternoon, and I've got a tutorial as well. So today, I'm running a little bit late. It is 10 to eight. I've just dropped off my, my daughter to nursery. Usually I get her here at half past seven. So I'm 20 minutes late, but last night was a bit rough. She decided to wake up a few times. And so I was tired this morning. And I didn't get up as early as I usually do. This is one of my favorite parts of the day. I'm not gonna lie. Drop my daughter off. We have a nice little morning together. I drop her off at nursery and I get some me time in the car ride. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes to get to work. And on the way, I love listening to podcasts. I'm actually gonna start introducing some audio books as well into it. So I've got this like free trial with Audible and hopefully I'll get to work before half past eight. But let's see. So I've just arrived at work. It's now quarter to nine. I'm later than I'd like to be. Actually, I usually get here at eight o'clock so that I have a nice relaxed morning, gentle start, and make sure I'm not feeling too rushed or stressed. But today, as you know, I was really late. And also this filming process, getting used to it, um, it does take, it does make things take a little bit longer than if I wasn't filming. But anyway, I'm here now. I'm just gonna start off by booting up my computer and let's just log in a few moments later and today <laughs> what we're going to be doing like i said i've got a busy day i've got two clinics so let's log in and i'll tell you what kind of things to expect now a lot of the time people think of gps as you know, they just see lots of coughs and colds and all these minor little ailments. But actually, in general practice, we see 90% of the health problems. The things that go into secondary care or to hospitals and specialists are only 10% of the health worries for the population. And so we see loads and we actually prevent a lot of people going down the road of having to need surgeries and things like that. Because we can pick things up early, treat them early, and also we have a big hand in trying to educate people and prevent disease from happening. So that's why, that's just one of the reasons why I love my job. Got to stay hydrated. So right, I've got my breakfast. Um, like I said, I don't need to start seeing patients until 10 o'clock, but the elephant in the room, you know, everything that's going on right now, COVID-19, GP, my appointments, my clinics are really different to how they used to be. So now a lot of the appointments, rather than the patients coming in to see us, are usually done over the phone. And so my what happens is that the patients call in, they book appointments in, and I get a list of patients to call this morning. And so the appointment times aren't as strict as they used to be. So my patients are told I'll call them anytime between 9 and 11.30. And so sometimes I might start a little bit early which is one of the nice things about having telephone consultations. I can kind of dictate the time a bit more rather than waiting for my patients to come in. But the downsides are, it's like one of your senses have been removed. Now there's so much about medicine and everything that we get from the history from talking to people, but also a lot about what we see, um, how someone holds their self, examining them. A lot of those things have been cut off. And although we can still make really good diagnoses and management plans, things are a little bit stunted. And so some patients we will call in. I'm gonna have my breakfast and go through some lab reports. So I've got 21 this morning, more come in as the day goes on. But this morning I've got 21 lab reports to go through. And so I'll do that quickly now. And then I will start calling patients, even if it's before 10 o'clock, I think I'll start a bit early today. So I'll let you watch along. <laughs>
only caught last night. That was quite quick, actually. It's much easier to go through lab reports when I've requested them myself. So, I'm... so basically, my first patient, 30-year-old woman, complaining of ear pain for quite a while now, actually. It looks like it started about two weeks ago. Was given some antibiotic drops because I think they thought there was an ear infection. But she called a week later saying that it was no better. She was invited for a face-to-face -face but couldn't attend. And they suggested contacting the GP again to make an appointment. And it looks like she's left it for a week, but things are obviously still no better. And so she's calling us today. So let's see how we can help. Hello, is Mrs. There? Okay then, so how can I help today? Okay. Which ear is it? The right ear. And are there any problems with her hearing at all? Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is new since the last three weeks. Before that, her hearing was fine, is that right? Okay, so even before the pain started, the hearing was already not good. Yeah. Okay, okay. Apart from in the ear, is she getting any pain anywhere else? Is it moving? Mm -hmm. And has she had any bleeding from that ear at all? Because she's already had some treatment and it's not helped, and because of the location it is, I think it's important that I actually see her and examine her ear. Are you able to, is she able to come to practice today for an appointment? Yeah, okay. Can she come this afternoon? Is that okay or is it best? Okay, brilliant. All right, see you later. Bye-bye. As this lady's had treatment already, I'm just going to bring her in and see her. On the phone, it was her husband that was speaking for her and because of the language barrier. And actually that makes it much more difficult because some of the questions he's not too sure about, he has to go back and forth and he's not a professional interpreter. And so she's just going to come in this afternoon. <laughs> consultations and appointments a lot of the senses are taken away especially the ones of sight smell touching there are some ways that we can still examine patients even virtually and we have a system now where we can send a text message to a patient asking them to send us back pictures or we can even have video consultations and so what I've done today I have a I do this sometimes if I have a patient that's put down as a rash or some kind of growth or swelling I can often send them a text message and ask them to reply to it with some pictures. And so my next patient is an 11 year old boy whose mom has called it, well, I don't know if it's mom or dad, but her parents called in about a rash. And so I text them at the start of clinic, ask them to send me some pictures so I can see them before I give them a call. And they've done that very quickly. So I'm gonna call them now and see what's going on. Okay, so to finish clinic today, I have a patient that's come in. I think I mentioned her earlier on, but anyway, I just have to get all my PP on, so I thought I'd show you what we do. So I've just washed my hands. Okay, and that's me ready. So I've got my apron, gloves, my visor, and my face mask as well. Hopefully you can hear me with all this getting on. And I just take with me what I need. So this is just for a, a throat examination. So I'm going to check her temperature, make sure I've got my equipment to have a look in her throat, and also my stethoscope. So it's quarter to 12, and that's my morning clinic done. Okay. Pre-COVID, this is where we do a lot of home visits. I still do home visits, but actually everything goes via the telephone first. And so if I speak to the patient over the phone and we're able to sort things out so they don't need to have a visit, we won't do one. But if you know they do need to have a visit for whatever reason, I'll go out. But luckily today, nothing's been generated as yet. So I shouldn't be going out in the freezing cold British winter weather, which I have no complaints about. So hi, I'm back for afternoon clinic. I did see the patient at quarter to three. She had quite a bad ear infection. So I've given her some antibiotics for that and sent a little swab off to the lab to see if there, I can find what bug is causing it. Cause she's already had quite a few different um, courses of treatment. And now I'm about to call a woman about some pain in her foot. So 
so let's get on the phone. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Okay, bye. Oops. <laughs> that was cute. I think she's moved house, but that was her mother-in-law's house. <laughs> and a little kid answers the phone. So it is six o'clock. I'm in my car and I'm going home. Yay! <laughs> it's been a busy day actually. Lots of patients. I had a few things to do in between clinic, but I am done for the day. And I'm gonna go and see my baby girl and my hubby and I'll let you know when I get home. Isabella! Hello! Hi! <laughs> How are you? Hello, can I have a cuddle? This is my favorite part of the day. When I get home and see this little one, and this big one, say hey, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> Which button? Is it this one? Is it this one? Did you change it? Bella, where are you? Isabella, where are you? Oh, there she is. Hey, Bella. Right, so I'm in my favourite spot. Well, one of them in the house. It's radiator right in the kitchen. And baby girl is asleep. It is just after seven o'clock. And me and the cameraman over there, aka hubby, I'm going to sit down and have some dinner. On Monday is the day that I work a bit later at work. I don't finish till six, and so I don't get home until six thirty. And I'm always rushing, and I'm always rushing to get home because. Baby girl has a bath at 6.30 and is in bed by 7 and I don't like to miss it. And so I've got to spend a little bit of time with her today. And now it's just time. It's been a busy day. I'm tired. Um, I'm going to have some dinner with my husband, catch up on our days. And then just unwind and do whatever stuff I've got to do. I will do an evening routine video as well. So you can see a bit about what happens from this point onwards. But I think that's enough for today. So until next time.